Hey everyone, this is Sally Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and in today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to create this tri-fold shaped edge card. Make your own custom unique cards in the Silhouette Studio software using the tools that are available to you. Let's go ahead and get started. First, in the Silhouette Studio software, you'll need to decide what size you wanna make your card. I'm going to make a card that is the standard for 4.25 by 5.5 in the software. This is going to be a tri-fold card, so it is going to be larger than your just average size. I'm gonna come over to the Draw Rectangle tool on the left-hand side and choose my rectangle and simply just draw out a rectangle. Then I can come up to the Quick Access toolbar or you can find the same options on the right hand side under the transform panel and the second tab at your top is your scale tab. I'm going to use these scale tools. First, I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio so I can adjust both the height and the width to a desired size I want. I'm going to change this size for the width to 5.5. I'm gonna hit enter. It's going to adjust my width. With that lock unlocked, it adjusts only the width. Then I'm going to adjust this, and this can be whatever size you really want. I know that I want it under 12 inches tall, and it doesn't really have to be a specific size. We can adjust this later. So I'm just gonna go with 11.5 inches for now and hit enter. Next, I'm going to come up here to my quick access toolbar, or in under that transform panel, the first tab at the um, on the transform panel is your align tools. I'm going to first, with the rectangle selected, I'm going to align this to the left, and I'm going to align this to the top. This is going to help us in placing our score lines. So next, I am actually going to come over here, I'm gonna draw my score lines first. So I'm going to grab this draw line tool, and I'm simply going to left click, drag a line across with holding my shift key down, that's going to draw a straight line. I do not need it to be a particular size right now. My entire card is 5.5, with this selected and the aspect unlocked, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to adjust this to five inches. I do not like my score lines to cut on the edges of my card, so I'm simply going to make it smaller. And then I'm gonna come over to the line style panel on the right hand side, click on that, and I'm going to change the style to a dashed line. I like the larger dashed line for this, so I have one score line and I'm going to hold my Alt key down and I'm going to make a second score line. Now to place these score lines, I'm going to use guides. So I have aligned the rectangle in the top left corner of my design mat. I'm gonna close this window so you can see these guides. The first one I'm going to pull out, I'm gonna pull out two, one from the top, and I'm going to place this at the 4.25 mark. You can see on the right hand side, it gives you your Y axis measurement. This is going to be my first score line for a card size that's 4.25 by 5.5 inches. So I can bring this, when there's a guide on your design mat, it's going to automatically by default snap to guides. So if I bring this down to my guide, you can see that dark blue changes when I move my score line to that guide. It's going to automatically snap to that guide which is perfect, it's in the exact placement I need. So I'm gonna grab one more guide, and at this one, I'm going to place this at 8.5. So another 4.25 inches down on that card base, and then I'm gonna grab this score line and it's going to snap to that guide. Now I have my score lines for my card in the exact location I want. I'm going to left click, drag across everything to select my score lines and my card base. Then I can use my align tools again, and I can align these score lines to make sure they're centered in my card. Right click on this and choose group. Save this as your template file. So I'm gonna come up to file, save. And I can save this as my trifold shaped edge template. So you can always come back to this file to start fresh. You don't need to draw it every single time. If you are going to keep this as a template file, the next thing I suggest is going to File, Save As, and then we're going to change this to the Trifold Shaped Edge Thanks card. So name your card before you make any of those changes so your template file is safe. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the Text tool. 
and I'm going to left click on my design mat and simply type out the word thanks. Click off of it to deselect it and click back on it one time. I'm going to use the quick access toolbar or you could use the fill color panel on the right hand side and I'm just simply going to choose black. This is just going to make it easier for us to see. I'm going to grab this corner bounding box and increase the size just a little bit. We'll adjust the sizes here in just a second. I'm going to, with the text selected, I'm going to come to the right hand side and I'm going to select my text tool. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to populate depending on how many fonts you have installed on your computer. When you first open the textile panel is when those fonts load into the software. If you type up here, select this and I'm going to type in Babylon script. This is the font I'm going to use. I'll provide links in the video description below so you can grab the same supplies that I use to create these cards. Once I have that, if your font defaults back to the default text and not the one you want, then you need to give it time to load the rest of the fonts in there. Make sure your font is installed on your computer as well. So I'm going to simply hit enter and it's going to change that text style to what I have chosen. Now you'll notice that there is excess space on the top and the bottom of this in the selection box. This is due to all of the characters in your text style um, in the font file. It has to account for you changing it to any word or letters that you want, such as G's that hang down, J's, um, any swirls or glyphs that are going to be in that font style. That's why it has excess space. So I'm going to uh, hold my Alt key down. I'm going to make a copy. I like to keep the original off to the side so I can always go back and change that or I can move my mouse cursor over top of it to see what the font style is. Once you edit text, it is no longer editable text. It will not tell you what the font style is. It is a vector design. So since this is a scripty font, I'm going to come in here a little bit closer so you can see this. The letters do cut inside of each other. If I take the color out of this, you're going to see that a little bit better. With my design selected, I'm going to choose transparent. If I send this to cut the exact way it is, or if I'm saving this as an SVG, it is going to cut through those letters. I do not want that, so I want to right click on it and choose weld. Now you'll notice that all of those pieces that are overlapping are now one cut. So this is one continuous cut. This word in this script font is perfect for making cards and things because it cuts out all as one piece and you don't have to worry about little pieces that you have to glue in place. I'm going to fill this with color again so we can see it and then I'm going to zoom back out to fit to window. Now for this, if you wanted to, you could get rid of these guides, click on it to make it dark blue, to select it, and then press delete. Those are simply just a visual on the screen. I'm going to move this here so we can see the full card size. And then I'm going to place this down at the bottom, towards the bottom. I'm gonna zoom in towards the bottom here so we can see this. And this is how you're going to create your shaped edge. Every text, every sentiment, everything you type out, every font style is going to vary and there is no magic number in what we're going to do next. I am simply going to select both, left click, drag across both the card base and the text and I'm going to center this to make sure that it's centered. And then you want to decide on the size. I am leaving some of this hanging down because this portion of my card is not the full uh, 4.25 by 5.5. That's how we get our shaped edge. So I'm just going to increase the size of this a little bit and then again center that. Left click, drag across, and center. Next I'm going to click off to deselect and click on my text only. I'm going to come over here. You can notice here in the text style panel because I welded this it is no longer editable text so all of my text options are grayed out. It is a vector design now. I'm going to close this and then come over to my offset panel, which is the star, which looks like an offset around it. And I'm simply going to select offset. And here is where it's going to vary by your sentiment, your font style and your size. I'm going to select one. I want to increase the offset so it touches the edge of my card base. So I'm going to increase this in increments until I see that it is touching the edge of my card base. 
and that looks like it is touching and I'm going to click apply. Now you can decide, I have these little bits in here. You can decide if you're going to remove those now or later. Let's see what happens in the next couple steps and then we can choose if we're going to remove those. Some of these little pieces are just small. You don't need those necessarily to cut. I'm gonna click off of it to deselect it and then I'm going to double click on the card edge. It is grouped, so it's not going to bring up edit points. First, I need to ungroup this, but I wanna make sure that I'm not going to move my score lines. So I want to ungroup, click off to deselect, and then I'm going to double click on the card edge only. It's going to bring up these edit points and I'm going to zoom out here so you can see this. So there's only four because I have a simple rectangle. We're going to zoom back in here and we're going to add some edit points and that's as simple as just dropping an edit point onto the line that is active. So I'm going to, where this connects, I'm going to click on it, the line and it's going to add an edit point there. I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side where it connects. So now I have two basically um, base points. I can go ahead and I can just move these bottom ones in and I'm move them up in here. And I'm actually going to, I want this to keep this shape of this offset here. So I'm going to drop another edit point and bring this one up in here. And then I'm going to click off to deselect the edit points. Now, if I click back on my card base, hold my shift key down, and I'm going to select the offset only. And then I'm going to right click and choose weld. That is going to weld and it's going to give me my shaped edge card base. You can come in here and you can refine this a little bit more. So there's two things that I'm going to show you here. One, I'm gonna double click on this, or I'm going to single click, right click, and I'm going to choose Release Compound Path. When I do, you're going to see selection boxes appear around these tiny little areas and even one little even tinier area here. I don't think those are necessary for my card, so I'm going to remove those. The easiest way to do that is to hold your Shift key down click on the card base to deselect it, and you'll see that the selection boxes are only around those small pieces. I'm gonna press delete and they are gone. So now I simply have my card base. I'm gonna double click on this to bring up my edit points again, and we can see there's a couple of these edit points in here, extras, that we don't need. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to zoom in and I can delete some of these so there's not quite as sharp of an edge here and simply select one so it turns white and press delete. And I don't think that one's necessary either. I'm gonna press delete. So the white one is the one that's active. And you can choose whether you want that or you want it to be curved or not. So now I'm gonna zoom out here and move over to the left-hand side, double click to activate those and I can zoom in on this one. I don't think this one's necessary. I'm gonna click on it and press delete. There was two on top of each other, so I can do that again. Click on that one, press delete. And that gives me a little bit different of a shape. So let's zoom out here. We can see now I have my shaped edge card. Now to make your card a little bit more interesting, I'm going to come up here and we can add some pieces that you can cut from pattern paper or even solid cardstock to add to your card. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle that's going to fit inside of this card, which is going to be the front of the card. I'm going to just simply draw a rectangle, doesn't matter what the size is. With this lock unlocked, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to type in four and 5.25 and hit enter, and that is backwards. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna 5.25 and four and hit enter, and that is the exact size I want. I'm gonna fill this with color so you can see it. So we'll just choose a dark, um, color and then that's going to fit right in here with a border around it for our card flap the front of the card you can do the same for this top piece that can make it even more interesting so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to make a copy of this and I'm going to move it down here and then I'm going to zoom in on this area and then with that rectangle selected, I'm gonna right click and choose send to back. So it goes all the way to the back side. And then I'm going to left click and drag across everything. Keep in mind your score lines are not grouped. So if it helps you 
to zoom mm -hmm. out and select your card base. Hold your shift key down, select your score line and your second score line. And then if you right click and choose group or control G, you can group that all together. So now your card voice base is going to stay. We had to ungroup it in order to work with the edit points. So now when I do this, if I left click and drag across my card base and my rectangle, I'm going to center this just so that it's centered in my card and I can zoom back in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my text again. I'm going to open that offset panel and choose offset. And I can use the same offset that I used before or I can adjust that. With that offset selected, I'm going to click apply and then hold my shift key down and I'm going to select that rectangle. Then I can open my modify panel and choose subtract. And what you're going to see is that offset is then subtracted from my rectangle pieces. If I click off of this to deselect it, I now have this piece I can delete. This little tiny piece I can delete in there. These little tiny ones aren't really necessary for me, so I just click on those and press delete. And then you can choose, if you have larger pieces, you can choose to keep those. And just keep in mind that you would have to glue those individually. It really just depends on your offset size, your text, and what look you are going for. So you could keep this or you could delete it, delete, and you could see how that looks. Undo is Control Z. You can always go back. And if you decide to keep it and then you cut it and you don't like it, just simply throw it away. No big deal. So there you have how you can create a shaped edge trifold card in the Silhouette Studio software step by step. All of these tools are available in the Silhouette Studio Basic Edition. Here's a look at some of these finished cards and some additional options that I have created as well. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to check out the video's description for additional resources and the supplies I used in this tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.